And it can be found, you go to tech, tek.com. And there's a sliding window here. You can slide it over to what we're looking for. And it's right here. Get your all new XYZs of Oscilloscope's primer. So you simply click here to download. It brings up a download page. And you simply, simply click right here, download the file. And you'll get a copy of this document. It's a PDF document. And the PDF document, once you have it displayed, you simply click File, save it wherever you want to save it. So that's how you obtain your copy of the XYZs of oscilloscopes from Tektronics. The other manual we're going to use for this training course is the actual Regal User's Guide itself. And it can be downloaded at this location right here. And as we know, websites seem to change from time to time. So if this link goes bad, then we'll have another way to get there. We go to the actual Regal website homepage. It's a very slow connection, so don't expect any speedy results. At their home page here, we have a product search. We can select a type, which would be O scopes. Select the series, be 1000E, and the resource be user's guide. When we click search, it'll go ahead and bring up a link to that same place. So if we click this, we go to the same place, get the PDF file. I'm not going to do it because it takes it about a minute to download, even on my high-speed connection. So that's how you obtain the Regal user manual in case you don't have it on a CD that came with your scope. Okay, now that you've downloaded the reference tech manuals, let's take a look at the first one, the Tektronics manual, which I'll refer to as the Tech Manual, T-E-K Manual. It's compliments of Tektronics.com, and it shows the various waveform types. Got sine waves, damp sine waves, change in amplitude, da da da. I'm gonna read all these off. Square waves, a big one there. And they show complex waveforms which consist of pulses and square waves. And we have pulses shown here, a step waveform. And all these various waveforms are things that you will normally end up trying to look at with your oscilloscope. But in order to do this, you have to understand what is a square wave? What is a rectangular wave? What is a pulse wave? To understand that, we have to take one step further and look at this animated GIF file. There's a lot going on here in this animated GIF file, but basically it's showing how a square wave is created from the fundamental frequency plus its harmonics. So this is the fundamental frequency here on the edge. Let's say it's one kilohertz, such as our probe calibrator. So this would be one kilohertz, two kilohertz, three kilohertz, four kilohertz, five, six, seven, eight, nine, at on down to infinite number of harmonics. This, what this shows is right now they're going to start with just the base. Wait, it comes around again. It's going to start the base and keep adding an additional harmonic. Notice how the sine wave ends up being very close to a square wave when you add all these harmonics. Now this program, it's not a perfect square wave because they've run out. They don't have enough amplitude to add these harmonics here in the middle. So it's almost a perfect square wave. So the important thing to take away from this is that a square wave is constructed from a fundamental frequency, which is a frequency of the square wave, which is really a sine wave at that frequency, plus all the harmonics that make it have sharp corners. Without the harmonics, you lose the sharp corners. You can see from this display here that about 10, the tenth harmonics is enough to make it look pretty much like a square wave. But right now, it looks pretty much like a square wave but it takes infinite harmonics to make it be a perfect right angle corner square wave. So in the oscilloscope use, what we're concerned about is that it takes at least the tenth harmonic to get a reasonable square wave notation of the oscilloscope bandwidth. So I was trying to give you a visual idea of the difference between a sine wave and a square wave, both of them being the same frequency. A sine wave just needs the fundamental Square wave needs all these harmonics to make it turn into a square wave. So that's why a square wave, a square wave is one of the hardest things to display on your oscilloscope. With that in mind, let's take a look at something else. 
The Regal Manual has a section on compensating probes. It tells you how to do it. We'll just skip down here to the pictures. Overcompensated, correctly compensated, undercompensated. So what this means here is that it's losing high frequency harmonics. And here it's over amplifying high frequency harmonics, which is distorting this normal square wave. There's some warnings down here. If you use a metal screwdriver, don't have it on something that could kill you when you touch the screw with the metal screwdriver. So, with these thoughts in mind, let's look at how the Regal Oscilloscope deals with these issues. What we're looking at here is my oscilloscope set up with channel 1 and a compensated probe connected to the probe calibrator. We went up with a nice square wave. If we turn on the measurements for that square wave, we see it is 3 volts, 3.08 volts actually, peak to peak, and it's period of 1 millisecond, the frequency is 1 kilohertz. So it's a 1 kilohertz square wave. Now let's do something to this square wave. We're going to modify it. So I'm going to turn this off. If we go up here to channel 1 data, it's right here, digital filter, F4, on the channel 1, channel 1 vertical section, digital filter, F4. And I come in here at the digital filter. Right now it's turned off. I've selected a low pass filter. It means it passes everything from the basic zero frequency up to some upper limit. My upper limit is 5 kilohertz right now. So if I turn on this digital filter, you're going to see the square wave get distorted. That's because we're not getting anything above the fifth harmonic of the one kilohertz square wave. We can select F3 now and we can dial down the upper limit. And we'll take it down. It says setting the limit. We can change the bandwidth, I mean the horizontal scale. I don't know which way it goes. No, it's the other way. I can get to a lower limit with this F3. Notice how our square waves turn into crap. And it's turned into a sine wave now. So at 1 kilohertz, it's a pure sine wave because we filtered out all the harmonics above the 1 kilohertz. If I turn off the digital filter, then you see it actually is a square wave. Notice it loses amplitude too when you filter out their harmonics. So this is a Regal oscilloscope showing us what happens when you lower the band pass of an oscilloscope. If I turn on this filter, we've set the upper band pass to 1 kilohertz. So that means this oscilloscope is only 1 kilohertz oscilloscope right now. As we increase the upper band pass of the oscilloscope, by clicking F3 and then go up here and amplify, increase our choices. As we go higher, notice here around the fifth harmonic, it starts looking like a square wave. And if we keep going, it'll look more and more like a square wave. And we don't have time, nor do we have the inclination to go to an infinite number of harmonics to see a perfect square wave. So with the filter turned off, then we see the actual probe signal. Having said all of that, let's go ahead and turn off channel 1 now. And let's take a look at channel 2. Channel 2. First problem you run into is what is it? You know, you can't even tell what it is. It's so distorted. So we have to use the auto function to get it undistorted. So we click the auto function up here. And now it says, oh, you've got a signal on channel 1, which is a calibrated probe. It looks like I have a signal on channel 2, which is an uncalibrated probe. It's undercompensated. So what's happening is the adjustment on this probe isn't allowing all of the high frequency signals to build that leading edge of that square wave. And if you overcompensate, then it amplifies the harmonics too much and makes a spike on the leading edge. So this should give you something to think about as you scan through these manuals and pick out information that's meaningful to you.